The pastor pressed on the accelerator and his car broke through the border gate. Machine gun fire quickly followed. And then suddenly, his car blew up into a million pieces. How could God possibly help him now? Stand by to be amazed on this episode of Stories of Faith. Hello friends and welcome to this episode of Stories of Faith. Today we're going to be talking about God's divine protection. But first, joining me via video link is Saidi Rodriguez. Saidi, how are things going with you and your family in Mississippi? Things are going very good. Thank you. We've been here a little bit more than a year and so I'm excited to see the fall again. We've been through every season, but my favorite is the fall, so it's coming. <laughs> very good. You and I both love the fall colors, and I'm looking forward to getting some great photos this year to share with our friends. So, Saidi, do you have a special Bible verse to share with us today? Yes. The Bible verse for today is found in Psalms 119, the biggest chapter. So, Psalms 119, verse 114. This is what the Bible says. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Again, it says, you are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Saidi, it's comforting to know that we can go to God and ask him to be our protector, to help guide us through this life. What do you think about that? Oh, it's true. It's true. It's always uh, comforting to know that we're not alone. He is there to help us. Saidi, do you have any stories about God helping to protect us? Yes, I do. I do. Uh, this happened not too long ago. My husband and our daughter, our oldest daughter, they went to the church, the church that we have that it's far from here, about an hour and a half, something like that. And they went over there. We couldn't join them, but they went there because every Tuesday there's prayer meeting. So he went over there to lead out in the prayer meeting and we stayed home. Here and there, the little ones and I would pray for my husband. Every time, uh, in the morning, we pray for God's protection. And that day, we had been talking about how the angels come and they help us. And we had um, talked about how he's, he's, he's always there to protect his children. He's a deliverer. That was what we were talking about that morning. So he goes to church, finishes the service, the prayer meeting, and as they go back into the car, they start driving home. Uh, here, sometimes what you, what you see, which is a little bit strange, but hey, is that the day could be very beautiful. And all of a sudden, there's clouds, gray clouds, and it starts raining hard. And that's exactly what happened. The clouds started getting dark, and then it started raining so, so hard that he said that it was really difficult to even see through the windshield. Uh, and so he was driving as best as he could and there's rain just pouring and our daughter's in the back seat. And as he was driving, all of a sudden, the car started um, hy hydroplaning, hydroplaning. And this was a two lane uh, road and the car was going straight and all of a sudden it started going like this. It was gonna go to the edge. What do you call the edge? Um, the edge of the road, which there's just trees and, you know, things like that. It's, it's bad, but it's not so bad. But on this particular occasion, which doesn't really happen, there was a semi truck parked and the car was going straight to that semi truck. They were going to crash into that semi truck. And my husband in the seconds that he had, he said to me, Sayuri, I wish, you know, in my mind, I had God help me or honey, hold on tight to tell our daughter. He said, all of that was quickly in my mind, but my mouth, the only thing that came out of his mouth was, oh, you know, <laughs> and at the moment that he said that, oh, 
the car went from going like this, going towards the edge to coming back and going straight again. Missed the semi track just by a little bit, you know. And we, when he came home, we were praising God for protecting him. Uh, it was about the time that we had been praying for them. And let me tell you, that was the hand of God moving that car back to where it was supposed to go. We praise God for that. So even if you don't have time to say a formal prayer, the Lord knows our hearts, and He answered your husband's heart prayer. Yes. Isn't it funny? There's a Bible verse that says, before you speak, he answers. Well, before you even say, oh, <laughs> amen. Very good. Well, now I found an amazing story that I thought you folks would especially enjoy. It comes courtesy of our friend, Dick Dirksen. Pastor Tanabos, or Pastor Tana for short, was the president of the Adventist Church in the Solomon Islands. What began as a regular day changed dramatically when his cell phone began to ring. Looking down, he saw that whoever it was had blocked their number. So at first, he thought, it was probably just some telemarketer. But when he picked up the voice on the other, eye, uh, other side said, are you Pastor Tanabos, the, the Seventh-day Adventist? And he said that he was. And then the person on the line said, hold then for the Prime Minister of Australia. Wow, the Prime Minister? Now Pastor Tana wondered what in the world was going on. But moments later, he heard, Pastor Tana, this is so-and-so, the Prime Minister of Australia. As you know, we're having a bit of a problem with the rebels in the Solomon Islands right now. And then there was a pause, so Pastor Tana said, yes, sir. And then he went on, I understand that you know everyone in the Solomon Islands. Is that right, said the Prime Minister? Well, Pastor said, no, sir, but I do know most of them. And then he continued, do you know the rebel leader? I hear that he's maybe one of your members. Pastor said, yes, I know him. We have many members on both sides of the conflict, sir. My people tell me that they have a message for the rebel leader, but they've been unable to reach him. I would like to talk to him personally. Might you be able to make this happen? Well, Pastor Tana asked, what would you do? Pastor Tana was careful to stay out of political conflicts. He wanted people to know that the side that he was on was God's side. But then he found himself saying, I'm willing to try, sir. What would you like me to do? Thank you, Pastor, he said. Please go right back to your house. A man in a helicopter will bring you a coded cell phone with instructions about how the rebel commander can use it to call on a safe line. Please pick up the phone from the man in the helicopter and deliver it to the rebel leader for me. That's all. Can you do that? Pastor said, yes, sir, I'll do my best. Well, Pastor Tana headed home. But about the time he, and about the time he arrived, there was a camouflaged Apache helicopter landing in a nearby field. A man dropped out, ran towards the pastor with a small package. As the man came up to the pastor, he said, the directions are in the package, pastor. This will save many lives. Thank you. Well, after the helicopter flew away, Pastor Tana began driving to the barricaded road that connected the government side and the rebel side. This was familiar territory for him because he had church members on both sides and he often needed to go back and forth across the lines as he ministered. But this time he ran into trouble. The government barricade had a soldier who would not let him pass. Not today, Pastor, he said. Something big is up. We had to close the barricade. You may not pass. Well, the pastor tried his best. He asked, he prayed, he argued, but still they wouldn't let him through. So the pastor turned his car around and went to a small park, and he prayed. In his prayer, he said, God, it seems that you need my humble help today, but the soldiers disagree. What should I do? Stay or go? Suddenly, he felt God give him his answer, so clearly that he thought somebody was in the car with him. The word was go. So once again, he took a small yellow car over to the government checkpoint, but still the soldiers refused to let him pass. Now, what happened next sounds like it's out of a movie, but it was real life. Pastor Tana put his car into first gear and drove directly at the barricade. First gear, second gear, third gear. And all the while the soldiers were shouting their warnings, but his car broke through the barricade. Suddenly the soldiers were firing machine guns at his car but the car continued to speed on towards the rebel side. And then they used a rocket propelled grenade and the soldiers saw Pastor Tana's car explode in a fiery explosion. 
Was that the end of Pastor Tana? What could God do now that he and his car had been blown to bits? Sounds like an impossible situation, doesn't it? But God specializes in impossible situations. Let me tell you what happened next. You see, on the other side, the rebel side, the soldiers lifted the gate to the barricade and they let Pastor Tana and his car, both of which were untouched, pass through to the rebel side. Now, how this happened, I don't know. But somehow, Pastor Tana had been spared, and now he had to complete his mission. He found the rebel leader, and the pastor delivered the package from the prime minister. He told him that the directions were inside the package and that it must be very important. And then, with his mission done, he left. If you think the story's been strange so far, what the pastor did next is also strange. For you see, he drove to a local market and he bought six bags of fresh groceries. And we're talking really nice stuff. Then he went back to the rebel barricade where they lifted the gate and they let him pass through as he headed back to the government side. As he approached the government barricade, there was the gate, broken, just like he had left it. Pastor Tana parked his car and began unloading the groceries for the soldiers, who just about an hour ago had tried to kill him. Can you imagine the reaction? They stood frozen with their mouths open as Pastor Tana delivered the six, six gift bags to them. Finally, one of them spoke up, halting with emotion. He said, we shot you. We killed you. We saw you and your car die. How are you still here? So what did Pastor Tana tell him? He simply said, God needed me to cross today. I'm sorry that it made it hard for you. I know that you believed you destroyed my car and killed me. You did your job well, but God protected me. Please enjoy the fresh food. <laughs> wow. Do you think that made an impression on the government soldiers? The next week, when the battle was over and peace returned to the region, five of the government guards came to Pastor Tana and asked to learn more about his God. And you know, all five of them accepted Jesus. And some of them even became leaders in the island churches. So I ask you, what could God do in that impossible situation? He could do something totally miraculous. That's what. Isn't that a great story? Well, friends, we have more to share with you, including some stories submitted by our viewers. Don't miss it. It's coming up right after this short break. Stay tuned. Better Life Broadcasting is a viewer-supported Christian media ministry that offers streaming programming via apps on various devices. Please visit blbn.org to support Better Life or to get more information. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Stories of Faith. Joining me via video link is Sayuri Rodriguez. Welcome, Sayuri. What updates do you have about your family this week? Oh, I have two updates, quick updates that I want to share with you. The first one is this week, um, we had some visitors, unexpected visitor, visitor. Uh, we have a large backyard and I've always thought, you know, maybe one of these days there's going to be an animal. I don't know what kind of animals come around here, but you never know. And uh, we used to have deer that would come in Oregon. We haven't seen the deer. I mean, we see them far, but not around us. Uh, and guess what? We go outside and we're having our outdoor class with the children and they're looking with a little, you know, um, just looking around for different things. We come back inside the house and not even five minutes after we came back inside, our little Abby, she points at the door, the glass door, and she's like, mommy, look, mommy, look, mommy, look. I was like, yes, isn't it a beautiful day? <laughs> I didn't even see what she was looking at. And she's like, come look. And she kept pointing and I was like, it's beautiful. I was like, the clouds are pretty. <laughs> I was like, but then she calls daddy and she's like, Papi, look, look, look. And he's like, oh, what? He's like, it's a raccoon. It was a raccoon. And we had not seen that. But this raccoon was really, really weird because he came all the way to the window, to the door, the glass door. And he was just there hanging out, you know, and the kids were like, oh, so excited. I've never seen a raccoon this close. And it was just cute to see a raccoon there. Uh, we were told that we needed to make sure that he 
left the premises. So we, we tried making sounds and everything and eventually he left, but it was nice to see um, the wildlife of Mississippi. <laughs> so that's one, but I have another one and it's quick. And that's that we have a young adult Sabbath school class. We just started this class at church and I'm helping as one of the teachers. And we had been bring, there's kids that come, young people that come, I should say young people that come in. And one day as we were having our class, my husband knocks at the door and he opens the door and he says, oh, I brought somebody else. And along comes this beautiful young lady. And as she walked in, he goes, oh, let me introduce you. He says, this is so-and-so, the other teacher. And then he points to me and he says, and this is, and before he could say a word, she's like, oh, I know her. And I was like, oh, and she says, yes, he, she said, I've watched all of your programs, Stories of Faith. She said, I'm already done all of them. She said, I'm hooked. She said, um, my husband had mentioned it in one of the sermons that, uh, you know, sometimes I do Stories of Faith. And she wrote it down and then she went home and she looked it up and she started from episode one and she's all the way to the last episode and she was just so blessed by it and i was praising god that god is using this program we're hearing from people all over the world you know Sayidi, i think that people are looking to be encouraged there's so much bad news in the world and people want to be uplifted when we share stories of what god is doing in various places i'm sure that it warms their hearts with hope maybe they say i never realized all the things that God is doing around the world. I think so. This young lady told me that she watched, and I can't remember right now, but she told me my favorite is, and she told me which one was her favorite episode. She said that that day she was crying and she even called her sister and said, you need to watch this. And it gave her hope. Praise the Lord. Well, friends, if you want to see all the episodes of Stories of Faith, we put them up on YouTube. All you need to do is go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash better life network. That's youtube.com slash better life network. And there you'll find more programs. And there's even a special playlist with just the stories of faith episodes. So look for that there. And of course, we always appreciate it when you like and share our programs with others. Well, I'd also like to give you a short update about what I've been up to. As some of you probably realize by now, I love nature and I love to take my bike out for rides. Recently, I was able to go bike riding around Dorena Lake. Dorena Lake is actually a reservoir near Cottage Grove, Oregon. The Dorena Dam was completed in 1949, and when it's full in the summer, it's just a beautiful scene. It also has a wonderful bike trail that runs along the edge of the lake on one side, and it's actually a former railroad track that's been converted to a bike trail. If you live near this gym, Make sure to get out to see it when the lake is full. It's a wonderful place to spend some time relaxing, meditating, and praying to the Lord. Saidi, do you have another story you want to share with us? Yes, I do. Uh, the Bible verse that we read said that I hope in your word. And that's what this story is about. My husband and his prayer partner have been praying for a list of different names. Among those names are the names of our neighbors, specifically one neighbor. And this neighbor, he has a church that he leads, actually. I don't know if he's the pastor, but I know that he's one of the leaders there. And so he had been praying, my husband, for this neighbor. We even went to visit once with him, had dinner with them, he and his wife. And we see him almost every morning because he walks his little dogs. And we're walking or on our bikes when we do this. So we always say hi, we talk and we pray for him at home. My husband had been praying daily. And sometimes we pray for people and you wonder, is something happening? You know, we pray for their salvation. We pray for them. But what is happening? And sometimes God lets us in to see what he's doing. And that's what he did with this particular neighbor. Um, he said, to my husband one day, you know, I really would like to know what you believe. I know you're a, min a minister. I would like to know what you, what you believe. And so my husband took him at his, you know, offer and said, well, let's meet, you know, let me give you just everything that we believe on. So they decided to meet on a Monday. 
And that Monday, he told him everything, you know, everything we believe on. And he had so many questions. And he said that he sat there and he was like, wow, tell me more about the Sabbath. And he told him about the Sabbath. And this man said, I'm never going to be able to look at the Sabbath the way I used to see it again, he said. He said that when he was a young boy, his grandfather used to tell him, you need to make sure that you go to church on Sabbath. And so that always stayed in his mind, but he's been, you know, a Sunday keeper for the longest. So to make a long story short, they are now studying every single Monday. And not only that, he told all of his elders at church that this is what he was doing. The elders want to meet with my husband. And so now that's in the plans and that's something that we're looking forward to how God leads this neighbor said that he really loves God's word and how it is being explained from God's word. He is in our hiding place and our shield when we stay on his word. And that's how God brought this man to come to know more and more about God's word. You know, Saidi, I'm convinced the power is in God's word. People may listen to our opinions, but if you want to have authority and power behind your words, quote the word of God. Thanks for sharing that. Now, I'd like to take a moment to share some of the viewer stories that have come into us. You know, we've invited viewers to share what the Lord has done in their lives, and we have a nice collection of stories now. Let me share some of them with you. This first story I call the pigeon story, and we received it from a lady named Natasha who wrote us from New Zealand. She said that her family had bought some homing pigeons, you know, the kind that come back to home if you release them, and they put them out in an aviary to get used to it, and finally the day came when they were going to let them to fly out free. So her boys opened up the enclosure and out they flew. They circled and went high up into the sky and they headed north and the family waited for their return. But you know what happened? One of them didn't come home. Well, mom wondered if maybe a falcon had caught it. It was sad to think that maybe one of their new pigeons might have been attacked, but they just didn't know what happened. Some time passed and her boys thought that they should try to let the pigeons out again. But this time, before they released them, they bowed their heads and prayed that God would protect their little, little pigeon friends and bring them all back home safely. The pigeons took off and they circled, but they didn't fly away like before. Maybe, maybe they had learned a lesson. But anyway, suddenly a, a falcon appeared and it started following the pigeons. While well, her boys started praying that the pigeons would be protected and the falcon chased them for a while. Some of them disappeared towards the mountains, but, but one came flying back down with the falcon right behind it. It flew right into the enclosure and mom quickly closed the cage. The falcon might have thought that it was going to follow the pigeon in, but mom made sure that didn't happen. Well, I'm happy to report that after a time, all the pigeons returned home safely. Mom says that she was reminded of the verse where Jesus said, we should become as little children because her kids had more faith in God's protecting hand than she did. She also mentioned that her boys always pray before letting the pigeons out for a flight. And you know what? They haven't lost another one since. Our second viewer's story refers back to a previous program where we had shared the story of a lady who had a cloud that followed her through the desert on a hot summer day. Well, a friend to this program named Sister Lily wrote me and said that God had done something very similar for her and her husband she said that a cloud followed them as they rode their way home on Interstate 10 one day. It was 104 degrees outside. They didn't have air conditioning, but God gave them some refreshing shade. She just praised the Lord for blessings like that. Thanks, Sister Lily, for sharing that short story with us. Now, the third story I want to share with you, I call the TV blessing, and it's from a lady here in Oregon who wrote us a while back. She wanted to share how God had blessed her when she was in need. Her name is Dolores, and at the time of the story, she was 81 years old. She told us that she had never learned to drive, so guess what? She walks. She said that twice a month, she would walk to town about five miles round trip, maybe more. And one day, she had gone to the store and was on her way back carrying a bag of groceries. And she says that she was just staggering. I believe her, rock, her walk home was uphill also. But in her time of need, the Lord sent her help. A kind woman saw her and stopped and asked if she needed a ride. Well, that's just what she needed. As the kind woman drove her home, they had a chance to talk, and over time the lady found out that Dolores' TV was failing, and she was having a difficult time watching programs like Better Life. 
Dolores says that the screen made people's face look gray. Dolores told her that she was trying to find somebody who would take her to town so she could buy a new TV on credit. But you know what? In the end, this dear lady was so moved about her situation that she and her husband got Dolores a good TV set. Dolores was so happy as she said that God had given her her heart's desire. She could now tune into better life and it looks so much better. Dolores also told us that she has only one good eye due to glaucoma and so she needs a clear picture. And here she thought she'd have to put a TV on credit, but but God had a better plan for her. He gave her a new TV as well as a much needed ride home. Now Dolores still has daily challenges, of course, but she's been encouraged by these blessings. And friends, remember in this world, we're gonna have tribulation, but God sends us blessings along the way to help encourage us on this journey. Now, as we're coming to the end of this program, I'd like to ask Sayudi, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? Yes, I'm um, thinking of what you said of God's word and how it's the power to protect us. And I thought of this quote that I just love very much. And it says, build a wall of scriptures around you and you will see that the world cannot break it down. I hope and pray that we all stay around the word of God. Amen. Thank you for that. Friends, I hope that you've enjoyed today's stories. As we close, I'd like to invite you to visit our website at blbn.org. That's blbn.org. There you can watch our four streaming channels, one of which is in Spanish. And you can find our newsletter and program guides too. Oh, and there's also a way to send us a message if you'd like. We love to hear from viewers around the world. So even if it's just to say hello, please feel free to write us a note and tell us where you're watching from and maybe what your favorite stories have been. And so today, as we close, let me leave you with these encouraging words. Give your heart to God, do what he says, and you too will have your very own story of faith.